imagine, if you will, that I'm a young black boy <laughs> in the South, I suppose, and then a young black girl, and then an amphibious creature of some kind, you know, all alone somewhere by a pond. Okay, could you give me the note that I need, please? All right, so joining us now to discuss all things Xenobots and the future of robotics, we have Ian Kahn. He's an emerging technology futurist. Ian, great to see you again. Uh, Thanks for having me. So I just, I, I think of like The Matrix, like all, all those robotic movies where all of a sudden it goes too far and they take over humans. I mean, looking at this technology, while it is great, um, could there be any problems, let's say, in the future as you are a technology futurist? I got a mother. I got a mother. I got a sister. Not even a brother. I'm a lonely bro. I got a These Xenobots were designed on a supercomputer at the University of Vermont, and then biologists at Tufts University brought them to life. Researchers from both UVM and Tufts University were able to obtain living cells from frog embryos, repurpose them, and assemble them into new forms of life. Scientists behind the creation say they were not considered a robot nor a species of animal, but a new class of artifact. They call it a living programmable organism. Stem cells from African clawed frog embryos and formed them into tiny living creatures called xenobots, which were able to move on their own, communicate amongst each other, and heal themselves from an injury, making them the first ever living robots. With every technological breakthrough or a new invention, there's always chances that things will go in the wrong direction. I mean, with these robots and this new uh, idea where science is making a breakthrough, it's still very early days. Which is when researchers bulldozed the lab, dropped flash grenades into the rubble, and went back to their first love, stand-up comedy. <laughs> What's that? No? They kept going? Sweet. I think with anything uh, in today's day and age, there's a push. There are people with certain religious affirmations, with certain beliefs, and they believe in some things that everybody else doesn't. Um, it's just like the, the previous story you covered about Facebook. Some people love Facebook, some hate it, and you can't help but people have a right to express themselves. A few days later, the offspring became a new xenobot. The difference is, though, is that's like playing a video game. It doesn't have a mind of its own. It can't reproduce. Is it a good thing that this thing knows how to reproduce itself? I got about 40 seconds. I'm giving it to you. And that's when researchers doused the building in jet fuel, walked away from the smoking ruins, and took up selling driftwood sculptures on the beach. <laughs> no? Still making them puke robot babies? So right now, all the reproduction is, it's not programmed. These things don't have a mind of their own. This is being done in a petri dish at a molecular level. So these things are not becoming giant monsters yet. What else is out there? A beach? <laughs> a pocket knife? and your imagination. I'm a lonely frog. I got a Scientists part of the study believe the AI behind the Xenobots might be part of the solution in finding a more effective vaccine for the coronavirus. In finding a more effective vaccine for the coronavirus. <laughs> There's always, There's always someone, someone walking, walking among, among us, us who has, who has nefarious, nefarious objectives and, and will, will use some of our, some of our greatest technology, technology for the, for the unraveling, unraveling of civilization. civilization. That is, that is that's, that's always been the case. Take care, fisherman in a box. Yeah. <laughs>